Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us on today's webinar. We will be presenting license plate recognition with the twist of AI and talking how talking about how it is a force multiplier for law enforcement. This AI technology is a collaboration project that we have been working on for the last several years with Sony. It integrates well with our ecosystem of products and services, including our Rocket IoT, Bodyworn, and Avail Web. I'll be scratching the surface of how our ecosystem works during this webinar so that you can understand the value of the Smart ALPR and how it adds um, to that total ecosystem. So real quick, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Kristen Janes, uh, Utilities Digital Brand Specialist, and today your webinar host. I have been with Utility for just over nine years, and in that time I've watched the company and its products transition into what they are today. Couldn't be more happier to work for such a great company. Its products are cutting edge um, and keeps law enforcement and the communities that they serve safe, including my hometown and the police department that serves my neighborhood. They use our body-worn cameras and our in-car video. All right, so real quick before we get started, if you have any questions during this presentation, please type them into the questions box in your GoToWebinar control panel, and we will save the Q&A uh, session for the end of the webinar. Our lineup of speakers for today's webinar is as follows. We will be hearing from our customer at Noblesville, Indiana Police Department, Deputy Chief Cunningham, Utilities Director of Law Enforcement Relations, Chief Domkowski, our Sony partner, Satoshi Kanamara, and lastly, Utilities Chief Technology Officer, Simon Araya. Here at Utility, we have developed a complete integrated system for body cameras, in-car video, communications, and AR ALPR solutions for patrol vehicles. A robust evidence and asset management system that connects it all together to effectively manage digital media evidence and assets such as personnel and vehicles, as well as automatically activates recordings to adhere to recording policies put in place at each agency. This diagram shows how it all comes together to create utilities ecosystem. Our mission is to never ask an officer to do something that technology can do for them. We live by this message and strive to make it the best possible solution for our end users. One way of doing so is working closely with our customer partners during the development process and getting feedback from them. We have successfully created many product enhancements and features this way, such as our officer down alerting, CAD activation for body cameras and in-car video, and the ability to send real-time BOLO messages with images. It takes hard work and dedication but our goal is to make solutions through our technology that provide our customers with tools that help them do their job so they can focus on just that, their job, because it's an important one. So when it comes to our smart ALPR solution, we start with the Rocket IoT. This is the Rocket IoT box, and even though this box is built tough enough to withstand the elements from the freezing winters and blazing hot summers, I know you didn't join this webinar to hear about a black box, so let's dive in to the technology and see what's inside. The Rocket IoT acts as a core for many things. It's a mobile vehicle router providing Wi-Fi connectivity in and around the vehicle, as well as cellular connections. A vehicle diagnostics component helps to monitor the overall fleet health, which helps keeps the vehicle running. The Rocket IoT can function as an in-car video solution with DVR, providing audio and video that can be quickly offloaded to secure cloud storage. Smart sensors in the vehicle can trigger video recordings. But what you're here to see today is how the Rocket IoT acts as a powerhouse for running license plate recognition through the vehicle. Similarly, the Avel Web platform can manage many things. It is the heart and soul of the ecosystem pulling together all devices and data in the system, including body-worn and Rocket IoT video, audio and metadata, along with ALPR plate data, all into one platform, keeping the process streamlined. All of these connected devices can, re can be remotely configured through Avail Web by sending over-the-air updates. 
All video, audio, and metadata can be viewed instantly and managed right here within the platform. The system allows for additional features such as live video streaming for more urgent situational awareness incidents. Additionally, device data is tied together in the system to provide a clearer picture with timeline and tags of everything that took place. So now that you have the basic concept of the Rocket IoT and Avail Web and how they fit into our total ecosystem, we can talk about LPR. So as you know, typical LPR systems use video streams to capture pictures, analyze the pictures to find license plates, then do a lookup to find a match within the database. And then it's displayed to an officer in the car. This is all really good, but we wanted to find a better way to integrate the system for a real-time approach to ALPR. During our development process with Sony, we strived to ensure everything we were doing gave us the advantage of not only capturing and analyzing the data on the edge, but then sharing that data with the cloud so that decisions could be made to disseminate that information to the people within the agency who need it as quickly as possible. With our smart ALPR system, we still capture using camera feeds. We use picture analysis, but we use artificial intelligence for the analysis part. This gives us an advantage because the ALPR box that you see on the screen right here is designed to process dozens of pictures per second. It can analyze a substantial amount of data while the vehicle is moving at high speeds or stationary and even at night. The lookup part is similar. We allow lookups from state and NCIC federal databases, but we have added another level of lookup by allowing BOLOs to be sent directly from a VAIL web into an agency specific lookup database immediately. For example, if there's a need for an AMBER alert and you have the vehicle information, you can create a BOLO within a VAIL web, send it out to all of the smart ALPR vehicles that way, every vehicle will be on the lookout for that vehicle tag. If the plate is detected within the system, then actionable decisions can be made immediately. Instead of just displaying it to the officer in the vehicle, we can then also push that data up to the cloud. And then from the cloud, the data can be pulled into a veil web where it would be displayed on a dispatcher screen in real time. Taking it one step further, we can send the plate alert data to an officer in proximity of where the vehicle was spotted, allowing the agency to have quicker reaction time to critical information. Similar to how we do our body worn down alerting, uh, since our system is fully integrated, it has the ability to define policies that would allow agencies to capture video evidence in addition to the license plate number and the vehicle picture. So now, you can have dash camera video of the incident and even body-worn footage. This can provide even more information for a better investigation of the incident. So here is our smart ALPR solution. As you can see here by adding, uh, we've got the camera in the box, but by adding ALPR, agencies can turn their vehicles into ALPR collection devices. And it just takes these couple of things in addition to the Rocket IoT. It's a very clean and simple installation. So in these next few slides, I'm gonna be diving deeper into these four different categories of our smart ALPR system. How it is a force multiplier, providing more eyes on the streets. The searchability, the data that's collected and then is, the data is collected and then it's searchable within a veil web through various reports. And when we say it's searchable within a veil web, it's there immediately because of the connectivity that we have. By providing this information at your fingertips, officers are better equipped to walk into situations with more information as to what they're approaching, keeping themselves and their community safer. And through the power of the ecosystem, smart ALPR is better equipped to be customized to inject local watch lists and function based on a department's policies. All of that is customizable. So how does it work? As you're driving around, this is the platform that you will see. You have two live views of ALPR cameras 
which is good because you can check to make sure that they're positioned collect correctly. If they're not, they could be easily adjusted. As video data runs through Smart ALPR, you can see when it captures a plate, it will capture the image and then highlight the plate with a red box. Below that, the plate number and how confident it is, um, how confident the system is that it's the, the correct plate will, will appear. And anything that's hitting around about 80% or higher is very accurate. So while on patrol, whether you're driving or stationary, the data is constantly being collected and it's going into the system. It's paired to NCIC data, state and local databases that are downloaded directly to our box on a daily basis. It goes through and compares the data so that when a hit is obtained, the system shows it. As you can see here, I'm gonna play this video for you so that you have an idea of what that looks like. So this is us driving down the street. It's capturing the plates that it sees. And that was a hit. Looks like that was from the local database. So that's how quick it is. Um, and once the plate goes in, here, let's see, I think we're playing twice. Let me stop that. So I've redacted the plates in this video. Since it was a real hit, we didn't want to show any of that. So moving along, as the officer gets the alert in the car, the same alert is also notifying dispatchers in Avail Web. So here's that same plate from a dispatcher's perspective. This is capable because of that connectivity of our ecosystem. It immediately passes the data to the cloud to be injected into Avail Web, just as the system would provide instant officer down alerts. ALPR is totally integrated to the ecosystem to work this way. So you can see match plates here on the screen listed on the right hand side. Those are all the plates that um, were matched. And then you can, you can also see if you click on one of them, you know, you'll see this display in the middle where it shows you the picture in a little bit more detail. But the alarms on the right hand side, this is the same general area that we also can see our live streams and our officer down alerts. So since our smart ALPR can utilize utilities ecosystem, along with Sony's AI capabilities, it can function at high speeds to collect crucial data. No longer will patrol officers need to type in as many plates as they can before the light turns green. The system will passively and continuously do that for them throughout their entire shift. Capturing and processing multiple, multiple plates at one time, more plates than can be seen with a human eye therefore acting as a force multiplier for the agency. Greater efficiency of the officer on patrol allows for increased productivity for your agency. This allows officers to focus on their job functions while they're patrolling. The ALPR technology maximizes the patrol officer's effectiveness in the field. So our system can capture license plates as vehicles are moving at high speeds, and I've got a real world example of that for you right here. This video was taken by one of our users on Interstate 465, which is a four lane highway that circles Indianapolis. I'm gonna play this for you and I want you just to, to see what happens. <clears throat> and also I tried to blur um, some of the important, the plates that had gotten read before this. So that's what you're seeing. So notice the speed limit on the dashboard at the end of this clip, 73 miles an hour. We've seen it grab a plate from a parked car while it was driving 85 miles an hour. Yeah, it's, it's that fast. I'm gonna replay the video again. This time I want you to notice how quickly the system analyzes the data, matches it, and then alerts within the system. So that car right there on the top camera screen is the the one that it's gonna match, it hits it there and immediately alerts. So instead of the data, so sorry, yeah, at the same moment, we're sending that data to the cloud so that the same alert is available within Avail Web. Instead of the data being trapped in the car, the connectivity that we have with our ecosystem allows it to be distributed across multiple users instantaneously providing the ability to make real-time decisions. 
that's a huge differentiator with this system. So moving on, I've got another clip I want to show you guys. This is a video from driving through a Walmart parking lot. I'm going to play this one. So you can see we got the two camera feeds. There we got it in a second one. So that was two different ones within a matter of like a second and then a third one. So it's super, super fast. It can catch multiple plates, you know, quicker than the human eye could even see. Um, there was three matches within just a matter of seconds. So like I said before, it can analyze and process really fast. I'm gonna show you this next screen which is a list of those three hits that you can also see on the Rocket user interface. And as we can see here, if you can see my mouse, um, this one, this first hit was at 11.23 and four seconds. Whoops, sorry guys, let me scoot back. Um, 11.23 and four seconds, 11.23 and five seconds, nine seconds. So all three of those hits were done within a matter of five seconds. And the wanted person one that you see in the middle was actually pulled from the NCIC database. It showed that on the previous screen. So we're doing state and federal. It's being able to pull. All right, so safety. Our ALPR provides an officer safety component with live situational awareness by yielding potential threatening vehicle or driver, driver information to the officer before they take action. For example, suppose the ALPR system matches a plate on a felony vehicle with an aggravated assault. Knowing that information, the officer can call for backup before approaching the driver, reducing the potential risk. ALPR can also help provide a safer community by giving local law enforcement the information of who is driving through their town or parking at a large event, they could potentially handle or remove any threats before they cause harm. Additionally, it can help assist with finding stolen vehicles, wanted or suspect vehicles, and missing children or elderly persons. All plate data is collected and can be stored in the system to be used later. But what if there isn't a hit? What do we do with that data? That data, it's still collected. It's still maintained based on state law. If state law requires that it has to be purged after a certain time frame, it can be configured to do so. The search though is as of that second, as it's being collected, it's live and current here in Avail Web. Since we're gathering this information and we have the power of Avail Web at our fingertips, we're able to go back and search that data in real time. So I say go back, but really it's live and actionable right then and there. So maybe you're looking for a car, you can go in and do offline searches as long as we have the data within Avail Web. I'm gonna show you a couple ways we can do that. So what you're seeing in this image on the left is a proximity search based on an address. This shows all of the plates captured within the radius that you specify during a certain time frame. This next one, is a plate search. So you can do a full plate search or a partial plate search. In this case, I typed in the numbers 23 to see what would come up. And we've got a whole list of things that come up with, the, with that digit in there. And this is on our demo account. So um, we have a, a, a good bit of them in there for what we're doing, but you guys will have a whole lot more. We can also search plates by device that captured it. So if we know that a specific officer captured a plate we can search by that officer's device or vehicle and find it that way. All right, so this next feature that I'm gonna talk about is one that is unique to Smart ALPR. We can take plate data from the system and send it out as a BOLO to patrol officers in the field and even to officers' body-worn cameras like in the case of a wanted person or abduction or something like that. So a plate that has already been scanned in from one of the vehicles that are out there, we can take that data and we can send it back out at a later time if we need to, um, to where they can be actively searching for this plate. You know, this way they can use the data to act on it while the car is possibly still moving around in that neighborhood area. 
We can also set up alerts to send information to detectives privately from the patrol officers. This would be useful to monitor plates that may be related to an investigation. So you might not want the officer in the car to see it necessarily, but the information would be there for the detectives. So ALPR alert. Um, when the system finds a match, it can send alerts to the officer driving the vehicle, as we saw before. The officer in the patrol vehicle will be notified through their tablet or MDT on the rocket user's interface, which we saw. Because we have the capabilities of the rocket and avail web, we can configure the system to notify who in the department wants to get the notifications or who we want them to go to and specify how they get notified. So dispatch can be notified by configuring proximity settings we can further notify it. We can further define to notify all officers within the area. This allows for other officers other than the detection officer to be able to respond to that hot plate. Throughout Avail Web, we can inject bolos quite easily for any bolo or local watch sheets that involve a vehicle plate. So the system can automatically ingest that information and push it out to the AOPR vehicles immediately therefore providing more eyes on the street looking for that vehicle. All right, you guys, I think I've done enough talking. Up next, we're gonna hear from Deputy Chief Cunningham, the Division Commander for Noblesville Police Department's Patrol Division. He's responsible for overseeing the agency's patrol officers, traffic unit, canine officers, and the problem-oriented policing unit. He is also a graduate of the FBI NA class 274. So Eric, you are up. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, speaking to why we chose uh, the solutions from utility um, and then speak a little bit of, uh, about how we intend to use the LPR system. Um, one of the things we loved about the solutions provided from utility uh, were some of the officer safety features that were available. Uh, the body worn down feature has the ability to send out alerts when uh, the camera is in a horizontal position. Uh, the ability to live stream and assist officers with making decisions based on real time video. Uh, the ability from a fleet management perspective to know the location and, and speed of vehicles. Um, we had an incident just prior to the rollout where a one of our vehicles was stolen, and uh, you know, had that happened after our rollout uh, with utility, we would have had the ability from a bail web to locate that vehicle much more quickly. Uh, another key officer safety feature, and and also from the evidence management side of things, was the security of of the camera within the uniform. Uh, We've had neighboring agencies with other platforms that in critical incidents, the cameras have fallen off. And I think we've seen that in videos from around the country, but it's been our experience that with the cameras inside the uniform, it is very secure. Uh, in addition to officer safety features, uh, we appreciated the, uh, the integrated ecosystem and how that lends itself just to ease of use. Uh, within the avail web platform, it ties together all the different pieces of the ecosystem. Uh, and we found it to be just a user-friendly way to, in, in one location, uh, pull the information out of the system on all the different platforms that they provide. Uh, a, a key piece of that is CAD integration and all of the added sensors and triggers that are available to uh, take the thinking out of activation. Uh, we tried to be thoughtful in, in our recording policies and, and activation criteria to take as much of the thinking out of camera activation as we could. Um, I guess going back to one of those earlier slides about having technology do something for, for the officer, um, we've had uh, some success with all these different triggers uh, where accelerometers trigger on, on foot pursuits before the officer even thinks to activate the camera. Uh, where uh, lights and, and rifle rack sensors are triggering uh, camera systems where we might otherwise lose some of that data if we were counting on 
and officer activation in every circumstance. Uh, we really like the real-time upload where things upload automatically and data isn't just captured on a device or in a vehicle, uh, where from the field as it's happening, that data is dumped into the Veil web. And it eliminated the need for some of the infrastructure that would have been required uh, for some of the other systems. Uh, we don't have banks of uh, docking stations and, and chargers that, that might have been required um, from other providers. From the evidence management uh, side of things, uh, for all of the, the camera inputs, whether it be LPR or our body cameras or in-car vehicles, the Avail Web platform provides a solution for sharing those videos with the, plat with the prosecutor, and we can set policies up to where they have all the videos they need and just the ones that we want them to have. Um, and there's also the capability for smart redaction. We just found, especially from the evidence management uh, side of things, that it was, it was much more user-friendly than some of the other products that we had demoed. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't speak to the, the value proposition uh, with utility. We felt like we were getting a lot more um, at a competitive and lower price point than some of the other products that we had looked at. And, uh, and we found from our, our early user experience that they stand behind the products. When, when we've, they've been receptive to communicating about our user experience and uh, they provide a 24-7 tech support that we found to be very responsive. In terms of, uh, you can go to the next slide. In terms of how we anticipate using LPR, we've, we've had it in the field for about three weeks. In some of the previous slides, they showed a solution where you can mount the cameras to a push bumper. We've, we've opted for um, a bracket in the front of the vehicles uh, where the cameras are mounted just above the bumper. Uh, and one of the nice things we found about the, the camera platform is that it is easily adjustable based on different patrol patterns. Uh, here in Indiana, we, we are not a two-plate state, uh, so we aren't necessarily looking to capture plates off the front of a vehicle. So depending on how and where you're patrolling, we found that it's pretty easy to adjust camera angles if necessary to, uh, to get good plate data. Uh, one of the things that we, we've liked about the, the, the LPR in the field is just how it can increase situational awareness that it's running in the background so the officer can pay attention to their surroundings. Uh, and we were, I guess, really emboldened by successes we've had with fixed point LPR in the past, and we're excited about uh, what it means to put these out in the field and uh, use some of those same strategies and techniques. They've been a good investigative aid. We've solved an armed robbery and burglary with our fixed point um, LPR. And um, it just gives you a good starting point in an investigation to, with a vehicle description or time frame, be able to pull data out of the system. Uh, we anticipate it being a patrol force multiplier. We're all in a position where it is difficult to uh, ask for and justify additional positions. So it's important to uh, be efficient with the manpower that you do have. This morning to get some of these photos for the slideshow, I asked an officer to go out and um, just give me a demonstration of use of the product uh, so I could get a good photograph. And within the course of a few minutes, um, as we were just talking, um, he got a uh, suspended driver hit and it ended up turning into a drunk driving arrest. So um, just the everyday uh, plate and license hits will turn into things that improve the productivity of your officers um, in addition to those more serious hits that you're going to get for one in persons and stolen vehicles. Uh, other use cases that we're looking forward to, to using it is for public safety at our large public events. When we have uh, 20,000 folks in town for a concert or we have as a county seat, um, every day we have a large uh, group of people coming in 
when court is in session or we will have public demonstrations, just the ability to uh, use an ALPR car to scan parking lots for investigative leads, um, even if you don't anticipate a problem. Uh, we're looking forward to the value of that and have seen some value already. Um, and I think really the, ut the utility of, of ALPR systems is kind of only bound by your imagination and how to use them. Uh, officers that once they buy in and, and think of how to use it, they will surprise you with uh, the, the use cases that they come up with. Uh, you know, one, one thing I, I didn't anticipate was just the value of those extra camera views when it is recording. So uh, for example, we had an officer involved in an emergency driving run that was uh, broadsided and uh, having the additional uh, images and video from L the LPR uh, camera heads uh, was certainly valuable in documentation of that crash. And uh, you know, as I said, the sky's kind of the limit. Um, we, we found it to be a useful technology solution so far, and we're excited to continue to work with Utility and Sony as they continue to improve and stand behind the product. All right, thank you. Our next speaker is recently retired police chief from the city of West Lafayette, Indiana. In his 25 years of service in law enforcement, he leads his department in being the first law enforcement agency in Indiana to deploy body cameras. He's also a U.S. Department of Justice body-worn camera subject matter expert and a past president of the Indiana Association of Chiefs of Police, also an FBI, not, FBI, not, F, I can't even, FBI and a grad. Sorry, Jason, I don't remember what number, so you can let them know what that one was. Jason Domkowski, our Director of Law Enforcement Relations. All right, thank you. Uh, accessing databases. So we've recently been able to, to streamline our system to access state BMV files, which in turn grants users access to federal NCIC files for ALPR use. We can now gain access to most state files in a matter of days for new ALP, ALP our customers coming online. And everyone is familiar with the value of the FBI's NCIC database. And you're gonna get that valuable information instantaneously to your patrol officers through the ALPR system. Real time NCIC hits, real time. State database files and the information they provide for ALPR purposes do vary from state to state, but most include expired registration plate hits, suspended driver hits, and various other vehicle holds and driver alerts. Additionally, valuable local data traditionally disseminated at roll calls like BOLOs and investigative info and investigative leads from detectives can be automatically put into the ALPR system for real-time alerts while officers are patrolling their beats. ALPR will passively monitor for all these vehicles in the background as officers are responding to calls for service and patrolling throughout their tour. Uh, like Kristen said earlier, letting um, technology do for the officer and not relying on them to do it themselves. I have a couple of unique cases where ALPR has been a, a real force multiplier. First on patrol, passively capturing, collecting, and comparing data for officers on the edge. Beyond the usual wanted subjects and stolen vehicle alerts that we're pretty much used to seeing. Uh, the first example comes to us from uh, St. Louis County area. An officer sitting on the roadside for about 20 minutes doing paperwork like we're all, we've all done, uh, running radar, what have you. And ALPR is passively capturing data in the background as the officer goes about his work. The officer receives a routine theft call from a store down the road. Officer responds, meets with the manager, gets a description of a red car, no plate info. I think we've all taken this kind of report before. It's a matter of taking the report for documentation purposes and then moving on to your next call. Uh, we know it's not going to go anywhere from past experience. This is a young officer with a new tool, and he has an idea. Uh, he's thinking, I was sitting on the side of the road, and maybe in the last 20 minutes, the suspect car went by me as it left the store. 
So he starts going through the history of the scan plates over the last 20 minutes, which also allows for, it displays a thumbnail picture of the vehicle in addition to the plate. The store owner, the store manager sits down in the patrol car and uh, they go through the last 20 minutes of vehicles and lo and behold, they see a picture of the suspect vehicle in the ALPR system. Of course, uh, they then had the plate info from the system and an arrest was made later that day on something that we all know would have been never been a, a solvable case, uh, a solvable case. Something that small, leveraging the historical data captured by the ALPR from the field, going beyond just capturing wanted vehicles and wanted subjects, but also solving cases. A uh, second example comes to us also from the St. Louis area, involving uh, a detective this time solving crimes by using ALPR data. Now, there are a multitude of ways uh, ALPR data can be used in investigations, certainly a wealth of information to locate and identify people. But in this particular instance, uh, they had a robbery at a walk-up ATM outside of a credit union in broad daylight, out of the range of security cameras, of course. Uh, a female victim is pushed down during a struggle for her cash. Purse is uh, grabbed, or the money is grabbed. She's on the ground. She's able to look up and uh, is able to see the, the it's a Chevy. Uh, a, a white uh, color, uh, make only, color only. And she also gets the first two digits of the plate number, only the first two digits. Now, Missouri is a six digit state for plates. The female victim gives this information, two digits only, color and make of the car to, to the officers on scene. Uh, detectives uh, run the two digits through the LPR database and they get 700 matches right off the bat just on the first two digits only of the plate. They scroll through those, filter the list for white Chevys, obtain several models of white Chevys with pictures. They show these pictures to the victim. She identifies the suspect vehicle as a probable Chevy Cruze. They then run the filter some more and jackpot. Then a classic story where uh, a lady loans her vehicle to her boyfriend. He picks up a buddy and they commit a robbery. Robbery solved by ALPR and good detective work. And I want to underscore this, robbery solved using ALPR, ALPR with two digits only of a vehicle plate. There are all kinds of applications for ALPR data for investigations and an infinite number of possibilities to help solve cases. The bottom line is ALPR allows you to, your officers to do more with less. It's a real-time force multiplier as part of the total solution. And the last example I'll give is a real quick one. DeKalb County, Georgia PD has an incredible use case testimony of the power of ALPR and the value add of having this powerful monitoring tool when it's needed most during an Amber Alert. Within hours of an Amber Alert being issued for a kidnapped little girl, a DeKalb County officer's ALPR system hit on the suspect's plate. The officer made the traffic stop on the vehicle from the ALPR hit and the girl was rescued. It doesn't get any better uh, a day at the office than on that scenario right there, all from an ALPR hit. Uh, and lastly, from a, a law enforcement administrator perspective, I'd like to reiterate some of the benefits of smart ALPR that your agency can leverage for greater efficiency. What I love about this total system is the connectivity. Smart AALPR, out on the streets, your officers are connected directly to the AWS GovCloud for real-time access, updates, and those oh-so-very-important alerts. Much like the officer down alerts, our body-worn, uh, our officer down alerts on the body-worn, now we have automated AALPR alerts to the total system, always connected always communicating to the officers in the field. And as an administrator, I always sleep better at night knowing that my officers have the automatic alerting system on the front lines where it's needed now more than ever. It's intelligent. It reads license plates at very high speeds through windshields and all while, while scanning, capturing, and comparing data on the edge. 
unknown threats become known in real time. RALPR system is simple and easy to use. It runs passively in the background throughout the officer's shift. Uh, alerts are automatic. And finally, APLR is a force multiplier. I think you heard that uh, multiple times today. Greater efficiency for the officer on patrol allows for increased productivity for your agency. It allows officers to focus on their job functions while patrolling. It lets the total system maximize the patrol officer's effectiveness. The ability to do more with less makes ALPR total system cost effective for your agency. Then I'll turn it back over to Kristen. All right. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. We are going to go ahead and skip ahead to Satoshi Kanemara. So Satoshi is the VP of Sony's head of business, business incubation. Thank you, Kristen. Hope you can hear my voice, everybody. And then thank yes. you very much. Great story. Um, I learned a lot, of, even for APR for a large audience on the concert. I take note, note on it. Hello, everyone. This is Satoshi Karemura Sony Corporation. We're very happy to work with Utility to create best solution for all of you in order for you to focus on your job at a very effective manner. First of all, hope all you know the name of Sony. Is that right? All right, great. But also you may wonder why Sony in law enforcement. Oh, oh by the way, I have to update left-hand side of the picture with this. Uh, everybody knew this new toy that hope you can enjoy your Christmas with this. I'm sorry, PR time of Sony. But those look just consumer products still. But within those are lots of amazing cutting edge technology built in, including AI. And the AI is uh, one of the biggest technology focus of Sony. And also safety is one of the most important areas Sony should contribute. That's why I was given the mission to develop solution for law enforcement by utilizing Sony's AI technology. But Sony alone can do, as you know, then we are very, very happy to have great partnership with utility. Oh, by the way, I guess this dog could be the future K9. And the AI is everywhere, but the Sony's DNA bring our AI to the next level. Image processing. Everybody, want, everybody know that we have long history of camera development from broadcaster use or medical use to the consumer level. So we know how to handle captured image and the processing for best use. So that's why even during driving very fast speed or bad weather conditions, we can capture everything to analyze, which just AI company ever be able to do. Mobility. We are the company who are very good at making everything small, like Walkman, hope you remember. So we know how to squeeze even very gigantic, complicated AI algorithms into very small mobility pieces, like Rocket IoT, while maintaining best performance than anybody else. Robustness. We Sony always go through severe quality check for any products again, 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 again. And even this AI engine is not exception, AI exceptions, which guarantee far robustness. So those Sony's DNA realize much faster, much accurate AI engine at a very low cost manner for low enforcement use than anybody else. You just trust me. And a great thing about the AI is just keep growing by themselves. First, keep learning. We have already a bunch of real license plate information putting into our AI engine and still just keep learning. And once you start using a system that captures a license plate, which will also further enhance our AI capability and keep engine up to date. Keep improving. To accurately identify the license plate information, our AI engine keep improved by even learning state-by-state -state plate uh, characteristics, and also improve detections by learning all the necessary elements, including state recognition, which enable to de uh, detect, for instance, as you can see, typical California license plate like uh, O and zero, 
or BNAs, which even difficult to detect by human eye, but Sony AI can do. This journey keep going with you and upon your needs or requests or demands, we are happy to keep tuning it up. And then Christian already mentioned data. Having much data as possible will provide you many ways of useful safety. Of course, it will help immediately your day-to-day -day job much effectively by fast and accurate license plate recognition data analytics. But also, analyze all piling historical data may help for safety the community as one of forensic analysis too. And we are very happy to assist all your needs. Yes, we would like to listen your pain points and grow together. That is reason why Sony choose utility as a partner, since everybody knew that they are very technology savvy, but more importantly, utility established such a deep customer engagement to understand the customer needs and the pain point. Thanks to that, we could have spent over three years to go around the country with utility to really understand your issues and the pain point, then come up with this solution together with utility. So having this webinar opportunity, we really, really would like to work with all of you as a business partner and grow together. Thank you so much. So uh, let's move to the technology savvy part. Simon, please. Next up, we have our Chief Technology Officer, Simon Araya. Hello, all. I'd like to start by saying thank you for joining the webinar today. I'll use the remaining time talking about ALPR's future at utility. Uh, since uh, the people that spoke before me uh, explained how our product works with the ALPR system uh, uh, within our ecosystem, I'm going to focus on talking about stuff that uh, is coming your way in the near future. As uh, Sony, uh, as uh, Satoshi mentioned, uh, state recognition is very important to us. It's one of the most important uh, items that we're working on at this point. Uh, this is an important feature that will allow us to filter the hits prior to notification. As you know, most states have multiple plates and images within the plates that make it hard to identify the state markings without using technology like uh, artificial intelligence. This is not an easy lift. We plan to make this feature available to all of our customers using our LPR technology towards the end of this year. This will be done over the air without requiring any downtime. And I want to make sure everyone understands this point. All future updates going forward will be distributed to all existing customers over the air without having to bring your vehicles to the shop. So this is an important uh, item that we're working on. The next item is uh, stationary applications. Uh, a lot of our customers have asked about using the ALPR technology that we have for stationary applications. We have been testing this feature with our uh, local transit PD to capture cars that are left in parking lots over 24 hours. This uh, data will allow the local PD to issue citations to drivers efficiently without officers patrolling the lots. There are a number of other use cases that could be applied using fixed applications. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to uh, refine that. Some of it will be processed on the edge using the AI and GPU processor that we have. Some of it may be analyzed further in the cloud for uh, identifying uh, other use cases. And the potential here is very exciting. Another interesting thing that we're working on is an integration of ALPR with Body One. Uh, this is pretty exciting. You can now have a third camera that you can use to collect plates and get real-time updates from the ALPR engine running in your car. So you can step out of the car, take your camera, walk around. As you're scanning the plates, if you get a hit, your body on screen will notify you there is a hit. Uh, this, we think, is very powerful in terms of extending your ability to uh, go into areas where your car would not fit or uh, your uh, cameras would not scan, uh, depending on the orientation. Uh, we've talked about uh, our system as a, an ecosystem that's based on policy-based recording. Uh, and some of, some of our customers that are on this uh, webinar know already that you can customize 
aware, within the Veil web, how you would like to start recording uh, incidents. LPR now becomes another trigger into the system. Uh, and it's not blindly recording when you get a tag, but we can specifically define types of infractions that would cause a recording to happen. And at that point, uh, it gives you the ability to collect more evidence with all the cameras that are available within the vehicle. So this is another exciting uh, exci exciting addition that we're working on, and it's on our roadmap. Uh, policy engine in the cloud will also automate the process of pushing information out to the officers based on proximity, severity, and parameters defined within the veil web. For those of you familiar with our ecosystem, it's, it will work exactly like Officer Down cloud policy. We're working on putting the policies in place that will allow our customers to define the automation. Today, a veil web shows alerts when flagged plates are captured. It provides location, full picture of the vehicle, as well as a cropped image of the plate. The user can then select the alert and click on a message button to send out notifications based on geofence, geofences or specific users within uh, using our body one and uh, in-car system. The message can be viewed uh, viewed using our body one screen or the displays in the vehicle. This gives us the ability to make information actionable within seconds. Cloud-based policy engine we're refining will automate this manual process. And this is important when dealing with uh, time-sensitive incidents. Uh, the next item is something that was mentioned actually in our last webinar, the ability to define plates that would be uh, used for investigative purpose. And uh, this is an exciting thing that we're adding to our system. Within our Bolo authoring tool, you will be able to define uh, plates that uh, uh, would go directly to the investigator, to the detectives, instead of popping up in the vehicle. So this could be delivered via email or text to an officer's uh, phone uh, without actually causing an alert in the vehicle. So uh, in a veil web, our Bolo authoring tool will now include in the future the ability to define whether that is a plate that should show up in the vehicle or uh, appear as a message uh, uh, to detectives. This alert will be sent, uh, uh, it could also be sent as a bolo to body one as well. Uh, I hope you're as excited as we are about the possibilities of combining LPR with a mature ecosystem that includes communications, vehicle diagnostics, evidence, evidence collection with in-car and body one cameras, not to mention many more features that we offer today to our customers. Again, uh, I don't want to chew up too much of our time uh, that uh, we should save some of it for Q&A. I'd like to thank you for attending our webinar today, and I'll be available to answer some of your questions. Thank you, Simon. So uh, that's right. We're at the end of our webinar, and we're going to take the last few minutes to answer any questions that you might have. Remember, if you haven't done so already, you can type them into that questions box in your GoToWebinar control panel. Also, we had a couple that came in. I'm just going to go ahead and address. So um, if you had any issues or came in late to this meeting, uh, this webinar, we are, we are going to provide you guys with a recorded version of this webinar. You'll get it tomorrow. So the first question that we have is, how many cameras can be used at one time? So I'll answer this question, Kristen. We we support two cameras uh, 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 in addition to the two cameras that you may have for uh, uh, in-car DVR. So you will have a total of four cameras uh, installed in the vehicle, and uh, all of them would be powered by the Rocket IoT. Okay. Next question. Do you already need the in-car video system to make this work? It, it actually becomes as simple, and I don't know if you noticed how uh, when Kristen was showing the installation process, if you have an in-car system, it literally takes a single cable from the Rocket IoT to the LPR uh, GPU box, and then the two cameras will be actually connected to the, uh, to the Rocket IoT. So right now we're offering it with the Rocket IoT as an addition.
For those of us who are existing body-worn users, may we try a demo? Right now we have an active uh, uh, demo program going uh, 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 through our uh, sales and uh, operations group. If you reach your uh, your uh, uh, sales representative from our company, I think they will they will be happy to set up a demo with you. Additionally, if you guys fill out the survey at the end of this webinar, we can put you in touch with somebody. So the next question we have is how are misreads handled? Okay, so this is a good question. Uh, we will be adding a button in the interface in the car because this is something that uh, was asked uh, uh, from our existing uh, users as well. And that will allow us uh, or the officer to actually tag that as a misread. And here is where it gets very interesting. We'll take that data and feed that data back to the engine so that the AI engine can uh, learn from that mistake and do better in the future. So this is actually a very powerful feedback system for us. So uh, that is how we plan to handle misreads. Next question, for our Indiana presenters, did you run into any privacy or legal concerns when implementing ALPR at your agencies? And if so, how did you overcome them? Jason, can you can you answer this yeah, one? Sure, we've uh, run uh, LPR system at my agency for years. Um, Indiana law allows for that, and there has been no issues um, retrieving that data for other investigatory leads unless they're localized issues by city ordinance or such, but no state issues. Jason, I've got another one for you. For our Indiana presenters, what steps did you need to take with the ISP IDACS, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, to integrate ALPR with IDACS slash NCIC? Right, so IDAX is the state database for BMV files. Uh, we we did integrate with those LPR specific data files for Indiana. We've been up and running uh, for a few months now and accessing those files. They're seamless and we also received the NCIC database through the Indiana system to the ALPR and that's what Noblesville is running there um, on their system as well. Next question, are queries also searching other agencies' databases? This is another good question. Uh, this, I think, is truly the power of uh, uh, data. We uh, allow all the data collected to be available to all the agencies that participate in this program. So uh, any data that we collect, you'll be able to run it. You'll be able to run uh, search against it. All right, can historical data collected be used in retrospect to place a suspect? Well, we we do save the data uh, and Kristen mentioned earlier, depending on state law, we have to purge some data, but everything that we're allowed to keep will be available for investigative views. What that means is we provide a full picture of the car as well as the thumbnail, thumbnail location, time, and uh, you can search by proximity, you can search by uh, partials. Uh, this would be available to you as long as we're allowed to keep the data for investigative use. Our next question, what do you have for stationary platforms and how are they powered? So the stationary application is similar to the in-car. The difference would be the types of camera we would, would, would use would be different depending on the, the uh, location. Some locations require us to have cameras with optical zoom since the location of the installation is further away from the focus point that we're trying to uh, address. Outside of that, uh, it will have a solar uh, panel to support the battery uh, uh, power. We've done it with direct connect with, a, uh, with an uh, available uh, AC power, but we're working on both solutions, one where it's standalone and it's powered by uh, battery and solar panel. The other uh, application is 
direct connect. Uh, one of the trials that we have right now is going against an AC power source. Next question, how does this work at night as far as getting a clear image on the entire vehicle or is it only for license plate with night vision? So the the license plate cameras are tuned to work night and day. Uh, what we've focused on is the ability to capture accurate data regardless of uh, time of day. So they're, they're uh, tuned to focus uh, uh, the lenses are designed to focus directly at the at where a license plate would be to get clear pictures, as well as we have IR enabled cameras that allow us to illuminate the area at night so that we get decent uh, decent images out of the LPR uh, uh, cameras. And we've tested this. We've been working on this for the last couple of years, and we have a decent combination right now that gives us uh, good hits day or night. All right, you guys, we've already run over a couple of minutes. We're gonna answer a few more questions and then anything that was unanswered, we can reply directly to you after the webinar is over so that you have your question answered. So this next question, how is the officer notified when the body worn receives a hit? So this is another good question. If it is the officer that's actually driving the LPR vehicle, uh, whether you're using a tablet or if you have an MDT in the car, the alert will come in immediately. And I think uh, if, if you uh, 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 watch this webinar from the beginning, uh, Kristen played a video earlier. It is instantaneous. Immediately after the hit, you'll get a notification and the notifi notification will stay on the window until you dismiss it. Uh, in a veil web, it will pop up similar to how you would see alerts on the panel to the right of uh, the map if you're on live view. Uh, if not, you will see this notification panel pop up. You can select it and get details uh, of the hit. Uh, at that point, you have the opportunity to share that with other officers. You can send it as a bolo. So officers that don't even have an LPR system, don't even have a, a vehicle that they're driving, can receive it in their body one so that they can actually see what happened seconds uh, before. So there are a number of ways we can provide this information to officers. Okay, well, thanks you guys for sticking around. Um, we are going, to, sorry, I can hear myself because Simon's on. Um, so we are going to end the webinar here. There is going to be a survey after we sign off. We would appreciate it if you guys could fill that out for us. And then again, any questions that you may have asked that we were not able to answer, we will do so individually. And um, thank you again for joining our webinar, and we look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you.